This week on The West Block. Who knew what, when, about the allegations against former Chief of the Defense Staff, General Jonathan Vance. The only thing I ever wanted the minister to do was his job. Explosive testimony about Defense Minister Harjit Sajjan. Any allegations or any information that were brought forward was always quickly and then taken to the appropriate authorities. And what did the Prime Minister's office know? Against explosive testimony, contradictions, and questions left unanswered. Key members of the Defense Committee on their probe into sexual misconduct in the armed forces. I reached into my pocket to show him the evidence I was holding, and he pushed back from the table, said no, and I don't think we exchanged another word. I did offer to shake his hand at the end of the meeting and said, please, do get back to me with some advice to tell me what I should do with it. That was former military ombudsman Gary Walborn when he says he tried to hand the defense minister, Harjit Sajjan, proof of the allegations of alleged sexual misconduct by then chief of the defense staff, General Jonathan Vance. Members of the defense committee are now calling to expand their probe into the alleged sexual misconduct in the armed forces. Today, I'm joined by members of that committee, NDP MP Randall Garrison, conservative MP Leona Olislav, who served in the armed forces and 31-year military veteran Liberal MP Karen McCrimmon. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, Karen, I'd like to start with you. You're here representing the government on the show today. Uh, we're hearing from the former ombudsman that the minister physically pushed himself back from the table, put his hands up and said no when he tried to hand him evidence of alleged sexual misconduct against General Vance. The minister appears not to have told the prime minister. Uh, the minister has said he disagrees with elements of Mr. Walborn's testimony, but he hasn't said what. I think a lot of folks at this are, are, are looking at this and they're wondering, you know, is this the standard that we should expect from a minister of the crown to refuse to look at evidence, to not call the prime minister, to not take any action personally? Well, I, I think that's an incorrect assessment of the situation. I think the minister did take action and you can tell that he did because the, even the ombudsman said that the, the PCO, the Privy Council office, called him the very next day. And then, yes, two days later, one of the minister staff called him again to make sure that he was in contact with the PCO. It's the right, it was the right thing to do. Now, the, the uh, ombudsman brought a, a confidential and unactionable issue to the minister. And the minister said, I shouldn't be seeing this. This is not who you should not be talking to. You should be talking to the Sexual Misconduct Response Center or you should be talking to the Provo Marshal. But he did ask the PV, PCO to go and look into it and see what was behind these, this, this information that the ombudsman wanted to get him. Because, you know, the minister can't do things without solid evidence. Just well, but, but he didn't even look at the evidence. So how would he have known whether or not it was solid? He sent it to he sent it to the PCO and said to the PCO, "You go and do a look at it, this evidence. Tell me if it's what if there's something here I can do." But the Privy Council office, which is uh, an independent, non-political, outside the chain of command organization, who do this all the time, it's their job to do this for governor and council appointments. They looked at it and said, "I'm sorry, there's nothing here that's actionable." So. But the minister didn't just drop it. He followed up and had his staff follow up to make sure that the PCO was engaged on the file. Leona, the PCO is the investigating authority for governor and council appointments, of which the CDS is one. Why is it that your party feels the minister didn't do enough if he did report it to the PCO? Well, in this case, it's actually very different because the chief of the defense staff under the National Defense Act has a very different accountability. He is directly reporting to the Minister of National Defense. The Minister of National Defense absolutely has the responsibility, the authority, and the duty to take action. He doesn't need actionable evidence. Simply by virtue of being the Minister of National Defense, he can take action, investigate, and that is exactly what he should have done. It's his sworn oath to do so, and he chose to turn a blind eye. Randall? Well, let's look at this from the point of view of those who have complaints to make. And what's clear is that there was no effective action. 
So it's a little bit tiresome to hear people saying, oh, you knocked on the wrong door, you used the wrong channels. Uh, the Minister of Defence clearly is the person the Chief of Defence Staff uh, reports to. And if we're going to have any confidence that we'll ever deal with the problem of sexual misconduct in the military, people serving have to have confidence that at the highest levels, people understand the problem and take it seriously. Unfortunately, with the recent uh, allegations we've had against two Chiefs of Defence Staff, uh, we've got a lot of work to do to restore that confidence. Uh, Karen, the, the Prime Minister's office, the Globe and Mail is reporting, was in fact told about these allegations. Uh, Privy Council office was. Minister Sajjan knew. When the decision was made to extend John Vance's term to make him the longest serving chief of the defence staff, an unusually long time, should somebody have raised this with the Prime Minister at that time? Not necessarily an investigation, but just said, hey, you should know an allegation was made. The Privy Council office knows how to deal with these things. That's what we hire them for. They're used to dealing with very sensitive information. But you cannot, as a, as a senior officer, go off and start doing things and ordering investigations. Like, I, as a squadron commander, I knew I had the power to call a summary investigation, but I also knew that that power was limited, and I couldn't use it for a code of service discipline, and I couldn't use it for a criminal matter. But, and I think it's the same goes with... Uh, the further up the chain you go. So he used the mechanisms that were available to him, and that was to send it to the PCO for them to do an investigation. They did an invest, they looked into the matter, and they said there's nothing here that we can use. And, and we don't really know how they determined that, because we have asked them, and they won't answer us on how that decision was made, what policies they use, what they determined. It's kind of a black hole right now. But, Leona, I know the committee that all three of you sit on are looking into this. You're meeting tomorrow. You want to see this probe expanded. Who else do you want to call? Are you going to call John Vance? Are you going to call minister uh, members of the prime minister's staff? Uh, who else is it that you feel you need to hear from at this point? Well, that certainly is the decision uh, of the committee, but we believe that the investigation needs to be much broader. It needs to be much more thorough. We have a responsibility not only to service members, but to Canadians to ensure that the honour and integrity of the Canadian forces and the values for which it and Canada stands are protected. Our job as parliamentarians is to ensure that we do the best to make sure that that happens. So yes, we need to hear from anyone that was involved, but most importantly, we need to understand why the minister chose not to act and if this in fact is the prime minister's standard to which he holds ministers. It was the authority and the responsibility of the minister. The buck stops with him. He chose to turn a blind eye, leaving men and women in uniform in doubt as to whether or not we can achieve a harassment-free workplace and whether or not those who were complicit and have allegations against them will be held accountable. Randall, who is it you think the committee needs to hear from to get to the bottom of this? Well, I, I think, you know, officially we're done with this study, so the committee has to uh, expand the study uh, for two reasons. One, we now have the current Chief of Defence Staff who has been suspended while under investigation. So I'd like the Minister to come back and tell me why this didn't happen in 2018. It looks like a similar circumstance, unfortunately. And then, of course, the Minister sat in front of us and told us that he was as surprised as anyone to learn of allegations uh, in 2021, when it's now very clear after the testimony of the military ombudsman that he knew about allegations in 2018. So I think the minister has a responsibility to come back and explain the discrepancy between his previous testimony and that of the military ombudsman. Uh, Karen, do you think that the minister needs to come back so he can explain? He said he disagrees with elements of the testimony, but we don't know what those are. Yeah, like a, a, there's no trouble. I don't think there's any trouble with having the minister come back, to tell you the truth. And I just need to correct a statement. The current CDS was not su suspended. He stepped aside voluntarily. So there was some, obviously, some evidence or something that was actionable that made him decide to step aside voluntarily. So, but it's all about making sure the process is right. And if you look at the testimony we've had at the last two weeks in the committee, we have had brilliant ideas about how we go out about 
fixing this for the people of the Canadian forces. I think there's still a lot of questions and accountability in all this, and there's questions, as, as you raised, Karen, for women who are coming forward now, and, and we're hearing from them, who are prepared, that they want to know there is going to be a mechanism in place, a system in place, that they can trust will not see them punished for coming forward, and that will actually be independently investigated. Lots more to talk about here. That's all the time we have for today, so thank you very much to our three MPs from the National Defence Committee for joining us. Up next, the China...